first overseas premiere of UI's screen epic Spartacus is the most brilliant event on London's show business calendar for the year. Among the many outstanding figures present is Mrs. Pondit, Prime Minister Nehru's sister and Indian High Commissioner in London. The West End rings to the sound of the crowd's cheers as Kirk Douglas and his wife arrive at the theater. One of London's warmest welcomes for Spartacus himself, producer and star of the $12 million film drama. Climaxing the parade of notables of politics, show business, and society is the arrival of Princess Margaret and her husband, Anthony Armstrong Jones. The radiant princess wears a black gown studded with tiny lace flowers and a snowy ermine cape. In the foyer, the princess and her husband will meet a host of film industry leaders and ranking stars. Mrs. Christopher Soames, Sir Winston Churchill's daughter, presents Kirk Douglas, and the princess has a lot of questions about Spartacus. Director Stanley Kubrick and UI President Milton Rackmill are next, and then UI's Vice President for Foreign Operations, Americo Abouaf. With curtain time only minutes away, the princess and Mr. Jones enter the theater to see the film which London has already greeted with a full ovation, Spartacus. Production stops on the set of Spartacus to honor a visitor. Charles Lawton, Gene Simmons, and Peter Ustinov watch Kirk Douglas pass good news to Universal star Tony Curtis. Hello. I'd like to tell you that the leading German fan magazine, Film Review, conducted a poll among its readers, and it voted as the most popular foreign star of 1958, Tony Curtis, who happens to be a co-star in a picture that we're doing together now called Spartacus. I'd like you to meet someone you know very well, Tony Curtis. Tony? Thank you, Kurt. Tony, I just wanted to tell you that this uh, award, which is called a Bombi, by the way, given by Film Review, is equivalent to the Oscar in our own country, and I can't think of anyone who deserves it more. Congratulations. Thank you, Kirk, very much. I would like to thank all the readers of Film Review for voting for me. This is a great honor and a great thrill. Bless you and thank you. Hollywood news is made by some well-known names and one new face. Sir Lawrence Olivier, here to make his first Hollywood film in 10 years, is greeted by Kirk Douglas, who co-stars with Sir Lawrence in Spartacus. Joining them is a newcomer to Hollywood, well-known in Britain and Europe, Sabina Bethman, who makes her American debut in the $5 million epic. They're celebrating the start of production of Spartacus, the return to Hollywood of a film great, Sir Lawrence Olivier, and the arrival of a great newcomer, Sabina. The glamour that is Hollywood is in full display at Grauman's Chinese Theater, as a thousand fans witness a ceremony that is traditional in the film capital. Stars of yesteryear are on hand to see Kirk Douglas immortalized in the court of the theater joining 136 other stars who have left their footprints for posterity. The film star doesn't stop at footprints. His famous chin is implanted on his second anniversary of the release of the star's world-famous picture, Spartacus, the most expensive film ever made in Hollywood. Tonight's ceremony, sponsored by the Film Council and the Los Angeles Board of Supervisors, is a tribute to Hollywood's past and its even greater future. Arriving in New York by Jet, the star of Hollywood's newest and greatest spectacle of ancient Rome, Kirk Douglas, who plays the famous Roman gladiator Spartacus in Bryder Productions' $9 million epic. One of the most expensive pictures ever made. It has a brilliant cast. Lively advance interest in the book is shown at Idlewild before Kirk goes on to discuss worldwide release of the new film with officials of UI which will distribute Spartacus. Thank you. 